This video is a quick demonstration video on how to set the uh, bandsaw up and use it. On the control panel, after you plug the machine into the three phase power, the white light will show up. Uh, on the left hand side, you've got the oil coolant. The red switch is a stop switch, green one is obviously start. The right hand button, uh, if you switch, dial, turn the dial to the red, it won't lower the head. If you turn it to green, the head will lower. And the dial beside it, uh, numbered from 0 through to 9, is the uh, rate at which the feed will come down, so the, the rate at which the head will drop, that's how you adjust that. So with this saw, when you want to put a piece of steel in, you simply lift this head up at this end, lift it as high as you need to. When you're putting a piece of steel into the saw, this uh, clamp here will just slide backwards and forwards and it just winds up on there to tighten it into the saw. Changing the angle on the bed. This, this um, key here, this handle, you can actually lift it up and rotate it around without it doing anything to the thread. But when you're ready to use it, push it down and it'll undo the actual um, bed, the guide. So then you can shift it to the position you want and just tighten it up because the handle only goes so far. Pick the handle up, set it again and you can tighten it up a bit further. So that's how you set the, um, the guides, uh, the clamping guides up on it. One thing you need to uh, think about when you're setting the uh, clamp up, once you've got the angle and you've tightened the uh, clamp onto it so it can't move, uh, as you cut steel uh, if you're cutting multiple lengths and you keep winding the head in on it, it can actually start to adjust the angle because it hasn't got a pin through the bed to hold it in place. So you need to keep checking your cut angle if you're doing multiple cuts to ensure that it hasn't moved on you. Once you've got your uh, steel set up, you can get some trestles uh, to hold the steel at the correct height. There's numerous trestles. I think there's about four in the workshop, different sizes. They have pins that you can pull out and adjust the height on them. Some of them have... There's two of them have rollers on them, two of them are just flat tops. You need to just adjust them to ensure that the steel when you cut it is at a, in a horizontal position with the, the bed. You don't want it sitting up on an angle where there's clearly a gap on the left hand side where the steel is pointing downhill. That's what you want to correct with the uh, trestles. So let's say you've got a piece of steel inside the saw, you've clamped it up with the uh, vise and because you lifted the head up so high you want to bring this um, down a bit quicker so this feed rate dial you can uh, increase that it's currently sitting on uh, about one and a half if you just look at the head it's actually lowering very very slowly uh, as I'm talking but if you want to bring it down faster to get it close to the surface you can just increase the feed rate uh, and just as you get close to the surface just wind it back off um, so that's how you can actually bring the head down a bit quicker instead of waiting it for it to come down slowly. So that's on the feed rate dial there. The other dial, as I've said already, is actually if you switch it to the uh, red position uh, and increase it round to 9, it actually won't come, round, come down at all because this dial here actually switches the, uh, the feed rate off and on, whereas this just advances it at a uh, it's variable, variable uh, feed rate on this second dial. So I've got the piece of steel inside the uh, in the saw. You want to make sure that this head on here is fixed, but this one can actually slide backwards and forwards. So what you need to do is get it as close to the actual steel that you're cutting without it interfering with the vise or the actual piece of steel. The further you have it apart, the more the blade can wander in between. So by getting it, by closing this gap up quite tight, uh, it can stop the the blade from actually wandering slightly. So that's that's one of the first things you need to do. Get the piece of steel in there, get it absolutely flat down onto the bed before you clamp it up uh, so that you've got no gap in under here with a, I can't get a rule in here on either side, so it's absolutely flat on the table. If it's sitting up on an angle, it's gonna cut on an angle. So that's the first thing you need to do. So I'm just gonna start this. I brought it down quite close to the surface so all I need to do is push the button, and I want to set the feed rate at roughly at about 1. Uh, I don't want it any, any faster than that. The, the quicker you try and cut box section, the more the blade will run off on an angle. 
So you just want to let it do the work. Get a wee bit of lube on the uh, blade. Just let the saw do the work. Don't try and force it too quickly, otherwise you'll get a piece of steel that can cut on a really bad angle. Most steel wants to be cut at a speed, uh, a lowering rate of about um, one, one and a half maximum. If you, if you set it to go any faster, or lower any quicker than one and a half, what it'll do is it'll just grab and the saw will freeze. Uh, and it, it, the blade will be spinning on the drum, but it won't be going, doing anything. So once you've cut the piece of steel, it can get oil, uh, cutting fluid on the inside of it. So once it's been cut, just lift it up and let the oil run back out of it into the tank. You need to do that on both sides, uh, particularly if the steel is hanging down on an angle. The oil is all going to run out of the piece of um, steel. So just hold it up, let the oil run out of it. If you are cutting and there's no coolant in the saw drums here, which have got coolant in them, uh, you can just tip it into the side, into the uh, into the tray. The coolant tanks are um, quite small, so they don't carry much in terms of capacity. So just put a small amount in at once. Don't overfill it, otherwise it'll just flow out all over the floor. So just do it very slowly until you get to the get the coolant running properly. So this video concludes the basic setup of the bandsaw and how to operate it.